Hello and welcome to the Back Nine Report. My name is Carlos Torres, along with Fred Vader. Every week, we check in on the world of golf to bring you the latest news, insights, analysis, interviews, recaps, previews. Hey, we cover anything and everything golf. In other words, if it happened in golf, we have it for you. Hey, Fred, hi, how are you this week? Hey, Carlos, I'm fantastic. Uh, you know, it's October up here in northern Michigan. Uh, the uh, the leaves are changing. It's absolutely so beautiful up here right now. It's it's unbelievable. Uh, if you like color tour, this is the time to be up here right now. Um, we've got football going on. You got the NFL. You got college going on. My Buckeyes are number two in the nation, looking pretty good. My Indians, I can't say Guardians. The Indians are still in the playoffs. They won the first round. They're going against the Yankees now. That should be good next week. A lot of stuff going on, but we still got a little bit of golf going on. We've got uh, John Rahm won this weekend in Europe. Uh, we've got uh, Tom Kim won his second event on the PGA Tour uh, today. Actually beat uh, Patrick Cantley. Um, we've got uh, the Epsom Tour just named their 10 uh, people, 10 women that won LPGA cards for next year today. Uh, you've got the Meta Heel that's going on. They're still wrapping up as we're taping this right now in California. So it's a lot of stuff still going on, Carlos. But the biggest news right now, really, uh, the biggest thing going on in golf is the LIV uh, golf uh, tour. They're kind of wrapping up their season, right? Yeah, like every other tournament. I mean, like every other golf tour, except for the PGA Tour, right? They're still uh, starting. But anyway, the LIV a uh, golf tour, it's really wrapping up. Only two more tournaments to go. One individual and team tournament, and then the, the championship, the championship for teams, which is going to be a Trump, uh, Trump Doral in Miami. But really, they have the Jetta coming up this week. And that last one, Fred, uh, for now, we see that Dustin Johnson's leading, maybe as expected, the rankings very solidly, 118 points over Brendan Grace, who suffered some heat stroke there in this last tournament. Uh, hopefully he'll be fine and good to go in Jetta. He's 79 points. In second, he seems to be easy also over Cam Smith, who just came up the other day. He has played only two tournaments, but he won 16 points and 40 points, 16 in Boston, 40 in Chicago. So, so far he came up and just overtaking uh, Charles Schwartzel, who was easily in number three with 55. He's now number four. And Matt Wolf is uh, fifth and Louis Eisen 50 49. So all those three from there on is very close. So anything can happen now in Jedi. That could mean who's going to be those top three, top, those top three, Fred. So how important it is to be on the top three and how is it going to play out on Trump Doral in Miami? Yeah, a couple more names. I mean, you got Sergio is right there. Joaquin Neiman is right there. If they'd happen to have a couple good weeks here, or not really a couple good, I guess one more week. If they'd happen to good, have a good week in Jetta, uh, they could uh, they could make a lot of money. You mentioned it, Carlos, the top three. That's the number on the LIV golf for the individual bonus, the top three. Yeah, they pay a lot of money for winning each week. Uh, just like this week, uh, Eugenio Chikara, won uh, the Bangkok event. He was dead last. He was 54th in points. Boom, this win, 40 points. He moves up a lot. Uh, so he gets into the mix. If he gets hot at the right time, he probably secured his job for next year. They probably would have kicked him out uh, being cleared out at the end of the list. But, you know, big win for him. Um, but yeah, top three, Carlos, that's the number. $30 million bonus to the top three points winners after next week. So you've got Dustin Johnson at number one. Um, you've got um, uh, Brandon Grace, as you said, number two, and then Cam Smith at number three. Those are the numbers. But like you say, you got Matt Wolf, Louis Ustais, and Peter Uline. Guys really close there, okay? Patrick Reed that could still jump up into that thing. So the top guy right now, which is Dustin Johnson, is going to get an $18 million bonus. Not bad. That's even better than the FedEx Cup, right? The next guy is going to get $8 million for second and $4 million for third. Only the top three. You add those three numbers up, 18, 8, and 4. That's $30 million, Carlos. That's a lot of money just for a bonus for three guys. Besides that, they're paying 
you know, what they pay four million dollars for a first place win uh, every week. So then they pay the the three million to the team deal. Um, so they they're paying a lot of money, but there's this big bonus coming up for the individual guys, Carlos. They do, and uh, I mean, let's just also say this points that we were talking about didn't include the Bangkok tournament that just finished. So Eugenio Eugenio Chacarra, who was dead last with just one point, moves up over Henrik Stenson into the top thirteen, but also Patrick Reed, who just finished second, so he's moving up as well. So we'll see how that fares out. But like you mentioned, a lot of movement right there, and one of the important things that we have to see also is. You know, they're earning points and they're going to earn this money, but they're still not earning official world golf ranking points. And uh, there was a very good development for them, but then also a setback as well this week because they did an alliance with the main tour, the Middle East and North African tour, who does earn official world golf ranking points. So they said, okay, these last two are part of the main tour now as part of the alliance so that they could start earning money. But then the official World Golf Rankings uh, organization said, well, not so fast. Hold on. Uh, we have to analyze this. And uh, you didn't give us enough time for us to see this thing and all that. Fred, honestly, I mean, the tour is supposed to be already accepted for earning official world golf ranking points so just because LIV Golf now says okay I'm going to be part of that tour so now I think we're starting to see a bias really on the official world golf rankings who, who said no we're really analyzing things and trying to be you know fair to everyone when we're doing this you're not being fair to anyone that tour already you had said yes just because now they LIV Golf is now aligning with uh, the Minotaur. Now you say, oh no, they're, the, they're not gonna earn points. So, you know, we heard uh, about some reaction from Phil Mickelson and from Dustin Johnson as well, regarding this situation, why they're not earning. And uh, I heard Phil and Phil was very political, very, you know, commensurate. He, he measured his, uh, his answers in Dustin Johnson as well, but uh, at the end is why not? I mean, we have the, the the players here. Just because we're playing somewhere else, the the player is still the same. Their strength is still the same. Why you're not accepting this point? Yeah, you got a couple different issues here. Uh, number one, the Mina Tour has been receiving World Golf ranking points since 2016. So if you're going to give it to them, if they're going to say, okay, you got them. Well, if a Mina tour goes out and makes an alliance with some other somebody else and brings some other players in, well, how does that make a difference? They still should get those ranking points. And now their, their strength of, of tournament, the point of valuation should go up quite a bit, right? Now, those Mina tour guys are not going to, we're not going to see them in the, uh, in the live events. We're still going to see those top guys, right? One of the big knocks was there are only 54 hole events and there are no cut. Well, the Mina Tour events were 54 holes and no cut. So there's no change there. There's nothing any new, nothing any different. The only thing is that it's now these top guys from the Live Tour that are playing in these, and, and Mina Tour has sanctioned them. So, and I'm sure that Greg Norman and the Saudis paid them a lot of money to be able to do that. Uh, but it's probably worth it if they can get into the points. So I don't know what the official golf ranking could be looking at. I, I just don't know. It really probably ever, this evidently really took them by surprise. I mean, I, it came out of left field for me. I never would have given that a thought. So kudos to Greg Norman and his group for even thinking about that or getting that done, right? Um, that That's that's a bold move. I, I, I kind of, you know, I kind of like that actually. I, you know. So, um, so number one, I don't know how the, the official world golf ranking can deny them these points. Uh, so we've got a, a, a statement here from David Spencer, who is the commissioner of the MENA Tour. This is a very exciting day for MENA Tour and our players. Through this alliance, our players will now have enhanced playing opportunities and stronger pathways. So they're looking at the benefits to both tours. Then in answer, when the OWGA says, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, we got to look at this. We're not going to get these points out willy-nilly. Wait, hold on. 
So then he answers them thus. We have followed the OWGR guidelines for our 2022-23 season. Recently, there's been much talk in the golf world about limited field tournaments and 54-hole tournaments. For absolute clarity, the OWGR itself defines a limited field tournament as a tournament with less than 30 qualified players. Furthermore, the MENA Tour has always had the OWGR's blessing to stage 54-hole tournaments. So 30 players and the, the uh, LIV is doing 48. So that meets that criteria. The MENA Tour, as I said earlier, has been doing 54-hole no-cut events. So, you know, I, I just don't know what the OWGR can come up with for excuse to not give points to the MENA Tour, thus the LIV, Carlos. So I, I guess when the PGA Tour does their special tournaments with the top players, those are going to be having uh, official World Golf ranking points, I guess, right? That would be it. Or let's say the Hero World Challenge from uh, that Tiger Woods event, it earns official World Golf ranking points. He only has, has like 16, a lot has 16 of time guys, debated. right? which shouldn't be part of what the that definition is less than 30. And not only that, it's invitational, basically. It's exactly. not that everybody can go there and play. It's by it's invitation. All, it's so, only like 16 guys, too. Yeah, it's, a, let's say, 20-some. But the thing is, it's less than 30. Old. Right. But it, but there's one and big the distinction there, Carl. It's, it's Tiger Woods. <laughs> See, that, that, that's that's the thing. Still, you're making, that's just part of what we're seeing. There's definitely a bias against the LIV golf. Uh, there, there's no denying it. Doesn't matter how they want to, to sugarcoat it. There's no way. You are definitely being biased against this tour just because they are from Saudi Arabia and they're throwing money out there and uh, you don't like it. Why don't you just get part of it? You know, that that's, just what I don't understand. But anyway, I think next year we're going to be seeing a little bit more once this uh, tour also, may, which we still don't know. We talked about probably, probably Fox Sports being the one to be finally signing up with them to to broadcast their, their tour. Uh, we don't know yet. It's not official. There's a lot of rumblings going around. And uh, there's still for next year, we're going to see something on the on the. Uh, on the lawsuit, which we have seen players now step back out of the lawsuit and let LIV being LIV versus PGA Tour and all that antitrust lawsuit and all this thing. So there's a still a little, a lot of things going on. Still a lot of names that are being thrown out there that might jump to the PGA Tour even after we heard that super mega meeting on the PGA Tour top players and all that stuff. There's still some rumblings there about some players jumping into LIV golf. So uh, I think this, uh, to me, honestly, they should just come together and look for the benefit of, of golf. I mean, I, like you said, kudos to Greg Norman. They're really making some very bold moves, trying to see Hey, you're you're limiting me here. Okay, you're asking me to do this. I'm doing it. So they they're actually making very strategic moves, trying to see if they can actually get all the blessings finally to get those official world of ranking points and people to accept it. I can see. I mean, I can see if the LIV guys have to play in the LIV stuff and the PGA Tour guys play in the PGA Tour stuff. I can see where those two remain separate, you know, and apart. I can understand that. Okay. But for the majors, you want the best players there. We want to see the best players. So go ahead, give them their points, whatever. Let them earn their points. Let them qualify for the majors based on points or come through the qualifiers, whatever they have to do. Uh, let's not muddy the waters with the majors. Let's kind of keep those, uh, I don't know, pristine, if you would, or free of political free of the politics as much as we can, I guess. And let's just make it about the golf, like golf should be. So I, I guess that's my only thing, Carlos. Um, I don't know how you're going to keep them from getting points. And we want them. We want them at the majors. And whether they have a TV partner or not, that's yet to be seen. We thought the, the, the rumors were that Fox was going to do it and that, and that uh, LIV was going to pay for the airtime. And, you know, I, I mean, everybody's making a big deal about that, but 
The LPGA has paid for airtime air for years, okay? The PGA Tour is such a big draw, they don't have to. The network pays them, and then they get it back by selling sponsorships. But uh, sponsorships weren't that hot for the LPGA. They had to pay for the airtime and then try to sell sponsorships themselves to get the money back, which they did. I mean, I know a couple tournaments that got big big bills after the tournament was over from the from the golf channel said, hey, oh, by the way, you got to pay for the TV time. And they were not expecting that. Uh, that created a real problem. Uh, so um, that's not new. That's not that's an old story. Um, so that that's a that's a big deal. But there's one more thing we're going to talk about, Carlos, and that's this team deal. It's it's a little different. No, it is. And uh, how about that? Uh, how is it going to be there in, in Miami? Who do we expect? I mean, we're already seeing Dustin Johnson's team dominating. Pat Perez, even individually, he has only three points all over the, the year. But team-wise, he's been doing more money than he's been making on the PGA Tour. Well, Patrick Reed, you know, is good on that team. He's had a couple good finishes, and I think he won once as well. Uh, Taylor Gooch has played well. Pat Perez is like out of 48 guys, he's ranked number 46. So he's not played well, but he's made a lot of money just because of being on the Aces team with Dustin Johnson, Patrick Reed, Taylor Gooch. So there's going to be a three-day deal, 54 holes, just like they've been doing, shotgun stop, start, same thing. But the Miami tournament at Doral is all team. There's no individual play there. And so the first day, the top four teams, which is the um, which is the Dustin Johnson's team, the Aces, and you've got uh, the South Africans, and you've got uh, the, which is Stingers, and then the Majestics and the Crushers. Okay, uh, those are the four top teams, and so they get a buy on the first day. They don't play. So teams seated five through twelve will compete in head-to-head -head match play. So the highest ranked teams after that day then select uh, the, the highest ranked teams select their opponent. They get to choose who they want to play. So five, six, seven, and eight get to choose what are the other four teams they get to play. Um, there's only one alternate. Uh, they, they play two singles matches. Uh, let's see. For each head-to-head -head team matchup, three matches will take place. Two singles matches and one alternate shot forcing that. The matches will be played until winner is determined. There's no ties. Each match winner receives one point. Teams earning two points will advance to Saturday's semis. So that's the second day. So then the teams seated one through four, they're going to join in on the second day. They got to buy on the first day. And just like the day before, they get to choose their opponent. So all 32 players amongst all eight teams are going to compete simultaneously in a shotgun start. Again, you've got matches to determine who's going to be the winners. Then the final day, you've only got four teams playing, okay? We're all the way down now to four teams on the last day. Four teams, 16 guys. All 16 players will compete in twosomes with the team captains playing together. All four scores count towards it. Everybody's score counts. So you've got everybody playing. Playing in twosomes, all scores count. At the end of the day, the champion will be decided. So it's kind of a knockout kind of a thing. The first couple of days, the top four seeds do get a bye. They all play on the final day. The, the, the top four teams play on the final day. So, um, yeah, I mean, and again, you know, they're talking about big money again. And of course, it's, you know, it's the, it's the, uh, 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 you know, it's the live tour. So they, they all play for big money. So, but uh, it's a little different deal. That might actually kind of be kind of cool to watch that. I don't know. I, I, I'll probably try to catch some of that, Carlos. It is going to be interesting and uh, because of that format. And uh, a lot of things that are being done here, I, I think it's just something that we're going to start seeing all over the world happening and all that. And hopefully, like you're saying, uh, maybe hopefully next year we can see them earning points so we can see the best players only the best players in the majors and who knows you know if you let them do their own thing maybe we'll have their own Ryder Cup style uh, LIV versus PGA Tour so what we like need that. is another be... another international competition live versus uh, the PGA Tour in a Ryder Cup style deal hey you know that way they can go at it and they can swing at each other as they want and see who's best and all that stuff that would be decided like it should be on the golf course that's where it should be 
But anyway, any final words uh, before we go? No, we just we've been talking about this lift thing for now for two years, and it's finally kind of come to fruition. We still got a couple things hanging out there. This lawsuit's still hanging out there, and and uh, which I think is just frivolous. I don't see how there's anything with that. I don't. I don't even get why they're spending the money to do it now because they're up and running. What what the heck? The only thing they've got to worry about is the world ranking points, and that looks like they've got that solved. And the next thing is figuring out how to get on TV. So looks like they're getting it pretty well figured out, Carlos. Yeah, I honestly think if uh, LIV gets the official world golf ranking points, there's no need for the lawsuit because that's what they need. They don't. Yeah. They the players just need a way to the majors. They don't care about playing on the PGA Tour again. If they yeah. get official world golf rankings. There's no reason for the uh, right. anti trust lawsuit, but we'll see what's right. happening. But anyway, thank you for joining us. It's always our pleasure to bring you the latest in golf news and information. Remember to subscribe to our channel. It's down there in the description, the link. So go ahead and subscribe for us. Thank you for joining us.